Thank you for making me fabulous. <laughs> Down to my, all of my buddies at Razors on Highland Ave. Highland Ave seems to be the cut place the, these days. I know. Days, huh? It's hopping. It's, it's hopping. Hoppin'. But you know what's fabulous about having this haircut is as a woman, I was really devoting about an hour to like messing with my hair. Now I have an entire hour to cause trouble. I get a whole hour back in my day. So imagine how much you know oh trouble I can raise God. in an entire hour. It's I can fabulous. hear some of the audience saying right now, grow the hair back. <laughs> Give her less time on Facebook and on the microphones. Oh, what are you gonna do? But speaking of which, we're gonna we're gonna divide up tonight. We have a couple of topics we want to talk about. Absolutely. Um, your Facebook post this <laughs> afternoon I saw is that uh, Ward 5 favorite son, former mm -hmm. mayor, current Congress person, re uh, UA U.S. Representative Mike Capuano has a challenger this year. That is right. That uh, um, actually became official, I want to say, a week and a half ago. Now, Ayanna Presley, who is a Boston City Councilor, uh, up and comer. Uh, she has actually had several terms on the Boston City Council, but is really known to be um, a fresh face on the Boston political scene. Um, she's a woman of color, and in this Me Too moment, you know, now is the time where women are stepping up, and we're not going to wait for our turn. We're so going to step up and be heard. You, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth next, but uh, another topic that's come forward is Alderman Bill White, uh, former president of the Board of Aldermen here, um, is now, <laughs> has unleashed himself from the shackles of being president of the board and he's coming out with guns blazing. He mm -hmm. wants to change the name of the board of aldermen from aldermen to city council. Yeah, I mean, this has been an interesting evolution of Bill White and seeing him, you know, from back in the day kind of transitioning into this more progressive bill. Um, you know, you and I might not see this eye to eye because, you know, out of all of the issues we have to deal with as a community, should this be the number one thing that we're tackling, this this issue, this lightning rod, um, especially since we've had kind of a, a divisive election mm. where we're having, you know, this is kind of a period where you would normally see people coming together, trying to heal some hurt feelings, the, the old Unless school, the Irish. new school. And yeah. then you hold a grudge forever. That's right, for right. the next uh, three generations. <laughs> Yeah. But let's let's talk about um, Mike Mike Capuano, Congressman Mike Capuano, is uh, facing a challenge. Yes, and we seem to think that Mike is safe. You know, here in Somerville, there's a lot of people who think Michael is safe. But when you look at the district, what it encompasses, no one is safe these days. Well, when you take a look at the district, you take a look at the context. You know, this is the only majority minority congressional district in the entire commonwealth and you take a look at our congressional district right now i mean we do not have a woman of color mm. uh, we are losing our one woman representative uh, in the the third congressional district nikki songas yeah and nikki songas yeah. and and there are 13 people running for that seat right, right now and the fact of the matter is <clears throat> it is 2018 and you know, this old school way we have about, you know, oh, you got to wait your turn. Line you got to, you know, yeah, yeah. That, yeah th we're throwing all that out. You know, you're seeing women stepping up in this moment saying, you know what? The time for us to have a different conversation is now. And it does matter who represents us. It does matter that we elect our values. And if we're going to talk about the fact that we are the progressive Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that we want to be inclus uh, inclusive, we want to be intersectional. <clears throat> and the we fact want that our we elected don't have officials to be representative mm -hmm. of the districts that they're representing. Yes, and you know what's been interesting about this conversation, and I've been kind of observing, and you know, I have had my own interactions with Mike, and we can talk a little bit about Mike in Somerville. Um, but what has been very interesting is kind of the attitude that you see from certain people as if, you know, just voting the right way is enough. You know, well, if you have a white male elected, as long as they gr vote progressively, you know, yeah, it's fine. We've no got need other fish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it matters. It's, Representation it's matters. It's not broke, so why do we have to fix it? Is well, kind of. Is it broke? I mean, do that's we. That's a see? question for the voters. That is a question for the voters, and I think that is a question that we're going to see. 
Ayanna posed to the voters. You know, do we see Mike taking enough of a leadership position in Washington right now on the issues that, you know, a person of color, a woman, would want to champion? Being a strong voice, seeing certain issues between, you know, through a, a particular lens. That lens matters, and we know it matters given the, the political context that we're evolving in right now. So is there a risk, though, when you have somebody who's been in Congress as long as Mike has, no scandal to speak of, not really a backbencher, but a worker bee. I think that's the way he's viewed within the Congress. Um, do you run the risk by upending that because of seniority and putting somebody new in who doesn't know how to maneuver through the halls of power to get what the Commonwealth needs or what the district well, needs. See, I don't it's an old it's an old fashioned way of looking at it, but it's a question that people are gonna ask. Well sure. why would you trade seniority for don't take this the wrong way, but for somebody who's inexperienced in bring home the bacon? I have full faith that Ayanna Presley would be able to navigate those waters and learn the process and be able to bring home the bacon. I mean, this is a Boston City Councilor who has done this work, who is a top vote getter within the district, within the city of Boston. She's an at-large city councilor. She was the first African-American woman to be elected to the city council. Um, this is a woman who knows how to bring home bacon, how to advocate for her constituents. So. Uh, you know, meeting new folks down in D.C., you know, certainly, mm. absolutely, it's going to take a little time. Is that an excuse not to elect a black woman into a position of power? Absolutely not. Absolutely no, not. I'm, not I'm, in I'm using that same argument they used in 20, uh, what was it, 2012? Yeah. With a guy named Barack Obama. Oh, in 2008. junior Two senator. Yeah, like, oh, gosh, you know, what that guy. Know? What does he know? He's a, you know, a one-term you know, United States senator. Now he's going to be president of the United States. And I would argue he is has been one of our best presidents of the United States because he was able to bring that lens, that perspective. that And we need that. We need that. And the fact that we don't have it in Massachusetts, if you don't see something wrong with that, then I kind of question your progressivism then. Mm -hmm. You know, that you would just rest on your laurels and say, oh, well, you know, he's okay. He votes the right way. It's not enough to vote the right way. We need leadership. We need people speaking truth to power. We need women of color down in D.C. raising holy hell right now because we are in a crisis in this country. And if you don't see that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't understand your yeah, perspective. Yeah, Boston itself, how much of Boston does... Um the district represent does Capuano have? It's kind of a funky district. I mean, you've got it, yeah, because yeah, you've got like a portion of, of Randolph, you've got the Boston sections, um, you've got Somerville, you've got Everett. It's, so it's kind of an interesting mix. And, uh, you know, Mike has been able to win because he has had in the past this stronghold in Somerville and Everett. Now, because of changing demographics, you got to right. go back. Like when Mike actually won the seat, you know, we're talking 20 years ago. Um, the times have changed. Our demographics in Somerville have changed. The political context. Ooh, we're oh. going to lose this desk. <laughs> our um, desk is changing. Our desk is changing and evolving, progressing <laughs> ever forward. We're going to try to hold it up for a second. Yeah. You stay there. You stay there. Okay, Joe's going to fix the desk. I'm going to fix I'm gonna the gonna desk. I'm going to continue pontificating. Yes. But uh, times have changed. Times have seriously changed from 20 years ago. You take a look at you know, the evolution of our revolution in Somerville. Um, the old traditional uh, machine that we used to, you know, depend upon. We, we saw Joe Curtatoni, you know, having to, to basically put in some real work for re-election this year. So, <laughs> I mean, times are changing. Our demographics are changing. Uh, progressivism has evolved. And frankly, you know, I'm a former chair of the Somerville Democrats. Yep. You know, I have had a front row seat to the constituent services and how Mike interacts with constituents. And uh, problematic is how I would refer to it. Um, my experience. And you've had discussions <coughs> with Michael about on a number of progressive issues. issues your, the issues that you have <coughs> in the forefront of your mind. I mean, I don't think you've talked to Michael about um, 
you know, whether or not to change the name of the Board of Aldermen. I, I think. haven't. You've no. got some other issues that you No, but I, I've, I have had uh, an interaction with him um, regarding charter schools where I actually brought in some constituents of his from Boston to his office in Cambridge. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you're not going to see eye to eye. I didn't have any expectation that he was going to be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. But um, the dismissive and argumentative nature that he treated the parents with there was problematic to me. Um, as a ch former chair of the Somerville Democrats, like I, I remember, you know, at our Somerville Democratic picnic, you know, we went and asked every other elected official. The joke used to be, you know, you don't have to pay to speak at my picnic, but if you want to use the microphone, it's two fifty. Right. You know, because right. we're we're trying to make money. It's a it's a fundraiser for the Somerville Democrats. It's called extortion. Yeah, and I'm not above it. So <laughs> it is what it is. But you know, we're trying to do it for a good cause to raise money for the Somerville Democrats. He was the only candidate who wouldn't give us any money for the Somerville Democrats. And he gets up and you have all of these wonderful activists who have gone and, and bled for Ed Markey mm. and knocked doors and like have done incredible amounts of work, devoted their time and volunteers and just, you know, the lack of appreciation that I felt coming from him too, was problematic for Do you think he's me. too comfortable right now? Do you think he thinks he's unbeatable? Um, I do think, and it, it has been my observation of Congressman Capuano that you know, he he does have that tendency to, to believe he's in for life, you know, and there's a bit of arrogance that comes with that. So, you know, you can't go up to him and say like, you know, Mike, you know, I, I've got an issue here. I want to talk to you about or a situation. It hasn't been my experience that he's the guy who's going to be like, I want to hear you. I want to listen to you. Mm. It's very... Um, you know, and, and maybe it's just my interaction with him, but I find him to be very dismissive of me and the issues. And I, I mean, I'm not, you know, trying to toot my own horn here, but I do have a constituency of, of folks that I represent mm -hmm. as the, the founder and CEO of Massachusetts Parents United. We have 10,000 parents. And, you know, if I'm concerned about, you know, the Safe Communities Act or something like that and want to have a conversation with him, you, you would think like he'd at least want to have some kind of dialogue there, but it's it, to me it's been very dismissive. I know of, of other folks too who have felt that he has been um, very arrogant and comfortable, as if you don't have to make the pitch anymore. You know, I'm the congressman here. You know, I've locked down Somerville, and this is my seat. Well, you're gonna have to make the case this year. Then here's the pitch to Mike Capuano, <laughs> who I've known for many, many years. My dad, you know, knew Mike's dad, and you know, it's old Somerville. The I grew up on Sycamore. You know, he's right up the street That's on right. Browning Road. So here's the pitch. Central Street. Mike Capuano, come on, Greatest Somerville. Sit down with Carrie and I. What, just Carrie? You, you want to take your life in your hands here? Hey, hey, Sit down I'm a nice lady. I don't know where I get this reputation, but no, it's we should have a, we should he have should a conversation. It's election season. He should be out here in Somerville and protect his turf. That's the way I look at it. It's an old way of looking at it, but don't ever take your longtime voters for granted. And we should do that. Every elected official should have to go out and make the pitch. Because right. when we think about it, our elected officials, their job is to represent us. And how can you represent us if you don't want to talk to us? If you think if you've you got it all figured out. If you don't know what I'm thinking. Out, how you know, do, like, I don't get that. Well, it's good customer service. It's good constituent service. Is always know what your customer thinks about your product. Their work is their product. Mm -hmm. What they're producing, whether it's in Washington or up on Central Hill in, in Somerville. Well, I gotta their tell you. Their work is what they do. I, I do have favorites. I have, I'm a political geek. You know, Jim McGovern is my favorite congressman of all time. Love the man. You know, I'd lay in front of a train for the guy. He's fantastic. This is a guy who, when I watch him on C-SPAN, <clears throat> and he is saying... You watch C-SPAN? Yes. I oh appear on C-SPAN on occasion. Oh, God, Rodriguez, there might not be hope for you. <laughs> there is no hope for me. Trust. Trust. There is no hope. But when I see Jim McGovern saying, listen, I was down on Shrewsbury Street, and I talked to this guy, and this, this is important to him, and he's bringing up a constituent issue, like, Jimmy McGovern's a guy, Jimmy Mack talked to this guy, and mm -hmm. it's stuck with him in his head, and he's bleeding, and he's talking about it, and that's what I want. I want to see that my, my congressional representation, you know, it, it's not just about them, it's about us, right. and we're sending them to represent us down You there. bring up a good point, because, uh, I, I mean, in my mind, the last of the big time you know, sit in the coffee shop chatter was Tip O'Neill. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tip, my, my uncles and grandfather and the, my father, and they all knew him. 
they could call him. They had his home phone number. His home phone number was published. Mm -hmm. They could call him and say, Tippa, I need this over in North Cambridge, or I need this on Davis Square, or I need this. Tip was there. Mm -hmm. you know, if he wasn't there, he'd say, Joe, let me have one of the staffers call you back. I'll tell him to call you back in the morning. What time are you going to be available? And it would happen. Mm -hmm. You didn't go through five staffers, right? You had Tip's word that one of his people would call you back in the morning at, at, by 8.30, mm -hmm. and it happened. So let's, well, that's let's the bread and Mike, butter. That's let's invite Michael in. Yes, you know, come Michael, join come us. Come on in. Um, one Family other, discussion. So that's, that's on that level. We have a bunch of elections this year, including a governor. The governor. Yeah, um, oof, this is, this is a tough we're gonna one. Do, well, we're going to do another show because yes. you know that both of us will probably be at the convention. I will. I serve, uh, I'm ex officio delegate because yep. I'm, I serve on the Democratic State Committee at large. Um, well, so I, I will be there. I will be there in one capacity or another. As you know, I just came out of a board meeting for SCAT TV here. Um, we are discussing on how SCAT TV is going to cover the convention. Fantastic. In so I may be there as press. I may be there as a delegate. I, may I will be there as a chief teller. There so I want to put this out to the audience as well. If you are a new delegate to uh, the Democratic Convention, yeah. uh, I'm going to be actually whipping and in charge of our entire um, state senate um, district and going to be running that process again. I did it the last year as well. I'm tough but fair. I know the rules. If you ever want to see somebody who knows <laughs> how to make people cringe, well, I mean, it's it's a fascinating process. I don't know all you know the behind the scenes stuff at the, at the convention, but I observed Carrie last uh, two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, no, no platform no, last was last year. Yep. Platform convention was last year, and I just saw some of. I mean, I don't say this in a bad way, but some of the first time delegates, the Bernieites, you know the. And they were there, and they just kept looking at you with the eyes wide open because it was like, this is how you do it. This is what you do. Now go sit down. We'll call you when we're ready. But it's like being a judge. Yeah, it's it kind of like, like being, being a, judge. a judge. And I'm a justice of the peace, so there I'm kind go. of like in that vein. You but go. you know, you you've got to run the process. We've got to know the rules. We have right. to have an orderly. You know, right. otherwise you have 4, it's chaos. Four thousand delegates it's in a convention hall. Exactly, it would be chaos. So if you have any questions, I am your your chief teller this year. Yeah, those so. are coming up, by the way. The caucuses mm -hmm. in the city of Somerville are coming up on February 20-something. Yes, I don't have the date. February 20-something. Call Diane Masters. Call Diane Masters. She I'll go on to the uh, SumDems uh, website, Somerville Democratic City Committee website. I'll tell you. You're, even if you are not um, part of the city committees uh, in the individual wards, you are still eligible to go to these caucuses. So and you should. You should. And you, you should. can bring your people because uh, if you are a registered Democrat, you can bring your people out. They can vote for you if yes. you would like to go. Um, and you can find me on Facebook. My name is at the bottom of the screen. I am one of your local state committee people, so I am here to help and here to serve. So happy Excellent. to answer any questions for you. Then, now we'll take it from that. So we went from the federal to the state and now <laughs> down to the local yes, level. Yes, shall Alderman we? Bill White <laughs> has uh, put forth out there a proposal or a resolution to the Board of Aldermen in the city of Somerville to change their name. Mm -hmm. They don't like their name anymore. Aldermen. Aldermen came from an old English form of government, meaning older men, mm -hmm. more senior men, more wiser men. So here's where we do it in rapid fire. That's right. I've looked at it from the standpoint of I like names that are gender neutral, salutations that are gender, gender neutral. We have a president of the United States that's gender neutral, a vice president, an attorney general. We have all military ranks are gender neutral. Mm -hmm. We got rid of waves and wax a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, doctor, teacher, professor, mayor. And then you get to older men. I think it's time we change the name. Meh. Rebuttal. I don't like. I, I just think that this is low-hanging fruit. You want to change it? Change it. Yeah, I don't think this is My the most point. pressing issue. 
Honestly, what I would like us, to see, I would love to see us do is have a charter commission, take a look, fresh eyes on whether or not we have the correct form of government and representation in the city. I, I think that, you know, this is kind of kicking the can down the road when we really should be looking at whether or not we have the right form of government. I don't, dis right now, I don't disagree with you, but I like the way you phrased it. This is the low hanging fruit. If we can get people to understand that this is not gonna cost the city a whole lot of money, this isn't anything that's gonna disrupt the way that the city governs itself. No, but it's gonna disrupt govern those, a lot of people in the city and make a lot of people mad. It's gonna make some people mad. I don't, I'm not gonna say a lot. I'm gonna say people who are traditionalists, people who are looking for the board to do other things rather than change their own name, mm -hmm. are gonna be annoyed with this. And they're gonna say, why are you doing this stuff when you have so many other things that you could be paying attention well, to? Well, and I will tell you this, if we're going back to Facebook, because a lot of Somerville politics happens on Facebook, uh, Stephanie Hirsch, one of our brand yep. new uh, at-large aldermen, put it out there Alder to Alder, 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 Alder people. Alder, Alder people? Alders? What are we, what, correct me, anyway. One of the people See, wouldn't we it be have easier elected. If we just call them counselors. <laughs> well, perhaps. Yeah. And which is why I think we need to look at a charter, whether or not we're changing things anyway. But you know, Bill is going to check it out with our city solicitor to see if it's just as easy as you know, wham bam, we are now city council, city councilors, whatever. But when she put it out <clears throat> to some of the older school folks, the non our revolution, some of the, you know, the frankly, you know, folks that should be a part of the conversation aren't always um, respected in a lot of these conversations, mm -hmm. often put down saying, oh, well, they're old school. Well, old these townies. Are, yeah, yeah. But, you know, not for nothing, if I can use an old town Old townie term, phrase. Uh, these are the folks that built our community. The reason why it is so fabulous in Somerville and everyone wants to live here is because those townies built it. And I'm a little bit biased, you know, I'm fourth generation Somerville here. Uh, my grandmother was one of those people. And um, while I love having this new energy and this new vibe, I, I do at some point wonder whether or not we are losing the respect and reverence we should have for these community folks who helped to build us. So mm -hmm. I think they need to be a part of the conversation. There is a lot of change happening in Somerville. and to address this right off the bat, we've got these brand new alders in the city, mm -hmm. and now we are just going to, to you know, tear everything down, like everything yeah, is somewhere, it's, it's, it's a little Carrie, bit to where it came like, from. <clears throat> the proposal itself came from an old townie. Well, a Bill, I don't Bill know White, if I agree with that. I think it actually came from my school committee member in Ward 3, because that is where it actually well, came Well, now from. I can take issue with you because I did my research. Mm -hmm. Not that we're trying to one-up spend here. Yeah. I did my research, and do you know when the first proposal was put in as a board order to change the name of the legislative governing body? Like 10 years ago, wasn't it? More. Wow, when? 17 years ago, that was put in by none other than Alderman at large at the time, Denise Provo. Wow. So walk us through this. Like, what happened then that we did not see this change? What you had then was truly a townie mentality on the Board of Aldermen. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, it was very tightly controlled by a very small group of poli a political clique, um, and it was the um, hierarchy. You know, if you did your time on school committee, it was handed over to you when it came time for the Board of Aldermen to change. If not, then there was a very concerted effort of trying to get you beat. So people would gather forces, the word would go out. And this was pre-Facebook and pre-Twitter and pre-everything. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of networking that was going on. So they could either... That's when the machine really was The machine It was a machine. Oh, I'm looking at the time. We're going to probably... What do we got? Three minutes? Oh, yeah. we got three minutes left. So it was at the time that you were either with them or you were against them. And it's funny because that's starting to percolate to the top of the, oh, sure. the, that's out there still today. It's just a newer group saying, you're either with us or you're against us. But what, what happened was, it was the Board of Aldermen was trying to change their own name. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have nine votes, 
you weren't going to get anywhere. Right. No matter who you were. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to when Rebecca Gewurz was on that board, and she again tried to get them to change the name of it, saying, we'd like some gender neutrality here. You know, why are we and Chicago and probably Newton at the time, the only ones who still call ourselves older men. And she made a very eloquent pitch saying, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. So I'll meet you halfway, call me an older woman. And they kind of laughed at it. Yeah, the thing is like, to me, you know, six of one, half dozen right. of the other. Like we still have a strong mayor form of government. You want Correct. to call yourself city councilors, that's fine. You still have no power um, when it comes down well, to that's it. Well, you can pass step. some resolutions, stuff like that. What I would like to see us do, we really want to get down to brass tacks. We want to change some things in Somerville, like Charter Commission, let's actually have the conversation. Let's make a change. Let's not kick the can down the road, cover some stuff up. No, 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 no. I think I, we need to examine political power in Somerville in our, our form of I government. agree with you that we shouldn't kick the can down the road. And I think this current Board of Aldermen should move ahead very, very quickly with the changing their name to City Council of Somerville. I would just, I would encourage them to also just as an act of of kindness and good faith to the folks that may find this a little bit abrupt a little bit shocking do some outreach talk to them get everybody on board let's actually be inclusive intersectional that means some of our our older folks the the and, backbone of our community and do that quick before the next board of uh, city council meeting well thank you quick my, half hour my guest has been carrie rodriguez as always thanks for tuning in Stay safe, stay informed, see you next time.